Hello, today I'm going to show you the new Photomax feature we've added to QImage 1 version 2024. I'm going to show you what Photomax are and why you'd want to use them to make your layouts more interesting. So let's review QImage 1 borders first of all, because Photomax is kind of an extension of borders. When we add a print in QImage 1, we can select two borders, an inner border and an outer border. We can select the thickness of the border and the color. One restriction when using borders is that the borders have to be the same thickness all the way around. And many of our customers have asked to be able to change this and have asymmetrical borders so that they can have more complex layouts. So let's remove this border from this print and I'll show you now how to use photo mats. You're going to want to right click on the print and select the new photo mats option here and then click add photo mat. This opens up a new window where you can define the size of the body you want on each side of the print and also the color. In this case you can click the middle to change the color and then down here we have several options to shrink or grow the mat based on the size of the print. For this example I'm going to grow the mat which will make the mat bigger than the print and since I only have one print selected this option doesn't apply but it lets me create one mat to cover all the prints or create one mat per print. When I click OK you can see I have uh, my photo mat around my print and that the border is now not uniform. Now once we've added a mat we can do some interesting things with it. The first thing is that we can resize the mat on the live view. Now as with prints we can resize from the corners and that will scale everything on the mat just as it would scale a print. But since a mat is not tied to a print size and doesn't need to maintain aspect ratio, you can also drag the edges to make the mat a different size in only one direction. You can also drag the print around on the mat and notice that when you move the mat on the live view, the relative position of the print stays where it is. You can also click the inner border color here with the mat selected to select a different color, just like this. And you can also add multiple mats by simply right clicking on the mat, selecting the photo mat option again. Now we have a mat embedded within a mat with a print on it. You can think of mats as being general purpose containers for other mats, prints, and text. So if I were to add a couple of small prints here and then add a mat, make this one a little bit bigger. If you click these little crosshairs next to each text box, you can copy the size event to each size, which is useful. Notice that when I move this mat now, that the print on it moves with it, while this one stays stationary. If I drag this print onto here, and then move the mat again, they both move together. And in a similar way, if I drag a print off, once it's more than halfway off the mat, the mat realizes it doesn't need to move with it anymore. The photo mats you select are obviously printed as part of your job. You can also soft proof the color of mats to see how it will look with the ICC profile you have selected. And they can also be saved as part of a custom layout. So if I arrange these prints on this mat here, I'm going to turn freehand mode off. If I convert this to a custom layout, and then remove everything, you can now see that the mat is preserved as part of the layout and when I add prints they fill in the templates as you would expect. Now I'm going to show you another way to make a photo mat if you want to create the photo mat first and then add the print second. I'm going to go back to IntelliCenter here and remove everything. Now I'm going to go down and select the template thumb and I'm going to pick a print size 5x7 and I have my template. Well, to turn this into a photo mat, you just click on the inner border color here, pick a color, and now you have a photo mat. So if you were to go and take a thumbnail print and drag onto here, make this a little bit smaller so it will fit better, you have a photo mat with a print exactly the size you entered. Now I'm going to show you how to put this all together to make a greetings card. 
So let's remove this. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick a uh, landscape thumb that I want to add to a greetings card. Now when we're designing a greetings card, we have to think that the, uh, the size of the paper that we have here is we only have effectively half of this space because the greetings card is going to be folded. So I have uh, US letter size paper here which is 8.5 by 11 inches. So half of this is 8.5 by 5.5 inches. So I've added a print size here of 4.5 by 7.5 inches so I'll get an even border all the way around my print. So my thumb selected, I click on the print size and I'm going to turn auto crop on so that the print will, the image will fill out the print size completely. So let's add a um, little bit of border to this. Just want to show you that we can um, add borders and use those with photo mats as well. And I'm actually going to make this an inner border to maintain the size of the print, 7.5 by 4.5 inches. So I'm going to add a photo mat, but I want to be able to put some text underneath this print as part of the greetings card. So when I define my borders here, I'm going to make them quarter inch on the top, the left, and the right. But on the bottom, I'm going to give myself a little larger border. I'm going to make it 0.75 inches. And I want to grow the mat, I'm, uh, sorry, I want to shrink the mat, actually. And there we have it. Now we have our print inside of the photo map with the border. I'm just going to change the color here, make it something a little bit lighter. Okay, now we want to add our text. So with the print or the photo map selected, we can add text. And I'm just going to make this say Seasons Greetings. I'm going to change the color a little bit darker and I'm going to make the font just a little bit smaller. Okay, so we have all that, but we still have our photo map in the center of our paper. Well, we had another new feature which is helpful for making greetings cards and other layouts. And it's this little, this little jog uh, controller here, this auto center, which is to the right of the print position. Here you can see you can set the, um, this shows you the current position of this print, the left and the top, and you can set this. Well, with this little um, jog button here, all you have to do is you have to move it in the direction you want the print to be centered. So if I move it down, the print, the mat, actually is now centered within that half of the paper. One final thing I want to show you is that this auto-centering also works in photo mats. So if I were to click this print again, and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller to how it would fit, if you have the, the print inside of a map and you use a little jog button here to pick a side or a corner, it will align that print inside of the photo map that you selected. And if you want it in the center, you just pull it again in the direction it already is, and you can see that it centers the print right in the middle of that map. So I hope you found this video useful and that it can help you make some interesting layouts with photo mats and make some greetings cards and other types of cards. And um, happy holidays, everybody.